Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod review. Today, we're checking out something a little bit different from the norm and that is a combat overhaul known as MAME. Wounds, bleeding, pain meds, and headshots by Eclix. Now, there is a lot to go over in this mod and typically, I'm not a huge fan of the big survival combat overhauls as they tend to touch a lot of things and I prefer being able to customize individual parts of combat, but I actually really like this one and the way that it implements different mechanics as well as different items. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over it here and there's a lot to go over. So let's go ahead and begin by starting with the mechanics. There are a lot of new combat mechanics added with this mod, some of which you may recognize from other mods, of course, that have tried to achieve the same sort of difficulty overhaul, but I really like the way this one implements it as it's very simple and easy to understand as a user. For starters, this mod does add bleeding, something that is sort of present in Fallout 4, but only as a minor status effect. It's not a proper mechanic. Now, bleeding will occur whenever you damage a body part to 50% condition. This is going to induce a light bleeding effect, but if a limb ever makes it to 0%, so it's completely crippled, it will induce heavy bleeding. What's really cool with this mod is that the bleed is actually shown on screen as your character will be covered in blood as soon as they start bleeding. It's an effect taken from the blood bugs in the vanilla game. And bleeding damage is actually going to scale with your health, so it will always be a problem. It's not something that's just going to go away as you level up. Now, what's really cool about this mod is everything is configurable in the MCM, and so player and NPC bleed damage are both things that you can tweak, depending on if you want it to be harder or easier, it's really up to you. If you sprint while bleeding, it is going to make you bleed faster, so really think about your actions whenever you get into some serious trouble. And additionally, bleeding occurs separately on each body part. So if you're bleeding on your arm and your leg, those are two different instances of bleeding and they will stack. So keep that in mind. If you start getting shot up all over the place, you're going to bleed out pretty quick. If the player does start bleeding, it will stop after 90 seconds if untreated. Bleeding on NPCs will last for 30 seconds and the timer restarts every time you are shot again. If you want to treat it, light bleeds can be treated with hemostatic gauze or you can treat heavy bleeds with a tourniquet. So yeah, bleeding is a very serious addition to this mod, but I really like the way that it's handled. I love the idea of it stacking and getting worse over time. It's a very Tarkov style approach to bleeding and I really like it. Moving on, we also now have pain. Much like bleeding, pain is going to occur at 50% and at 20% you will induce severe pain. Pain will cause periodic blurred vision, sort of like a crippled head. Arm pain is going to reduce reload speed. Leg pain is going to reduce movement speed and jump height. Torso pain is going to reduce AP regeneration. The only way to relieve these symptoms are for painkillers. And sprinting on injured legs is going to damage them further. Also pretty similar to Tarkov. Another change to the vanilla system in this mod is the way that body parts are treated individually. Aside from pain and bleeding and all that, they are just different now. For example, limb shots are going to do less damage to the overall HP of somebody. You're going to need to aim for the torso or head to kill them, which is something that makes a good bit of sense. Now with this mod, if you want to uncripple one of your limbs, you're going to need a surgery kit or splint. You're no longer going to be able to just jam a stim pack in there. Now the torso condition is available, which was not something in the vanilla game, which is pretty interesting. And if you do damage your torso, you're going to cause pain, bleeding and reduced AP generation. And a new feature that I actually really like is that falling is going to do far less health point damage to your character. So when you fall a great height, you're not just going to die. However, it is going to cripple your legs pretty much instantly, which again, makes a whole lot of sense. Now, all of these new limb conditions are pretty much only affecting humanoid enemies. So humans, ghouls, super mutants, etc. Just keep that in mind whenever you are shooting at enemies. These aren't really going to apply to something like a death claw. Now the next section is probably one of my favorite parts of this mod as it's something that I mod into my game already and that is lethal headshots. Headshots are now lethal if you are not wearing a helmet because of course they are. Things shouldn't be bullet sponges and they shouldn't take 80 rounds of 5.56 to the head. Now this is mostly going to affect regular small organic creatures. Obviously it's not going to apply to things like sentry bots or much larger creatures like death claws or super mutants. Now, headshots with helmets actually have a percentage chance to penetrate as opposed to just insta-killing. So if you wear a helmet, it is going to protect you. Pistols have a 33% chance to penetrate a helmet. So if you're wearing a helmet, there's a one-third chance that the pistol round gets through, but there's a two-thirds chance that it doesn't and it actually keeps you protected. 
Rifles, however, have a 76 and 86% chance, respectively, depending on which weapon type they are. The Gauss and Railway Rifle will always penetrate helmets as they are pretty heavy weapons and they even have a 50% chance to penetrate power armor helmets. So not even power armor is going to save you if you're taking on something really heavy like a Gauss Rifle. Now, something that's really interesting is all of the stuff that I just talked about, especially in regards to the weapons and how they damage things, are based purely on keywords, making this mod very compatible with other types of realism overhauls. For example, if you want to use anything that adds realistic projectiles that have actual travel speed and bullet time and all that stuff, uh, they work with this mod completely because it is all keyword based as opposed to projectile based. So just keep that in mind. Everything will, should be pretty compatible. Now, really quick, there is a section talking about how all of these effects interact with the different NPCs in the world. So I'll go over that really quick, just so you know how to fight things after you install this mod. First of all, effects are going to apply it in ways that seem the most logical. So humans, ghouls, feral ghouls, and animals are going to be pretty much fully affected by a lot of stuff that we talked about already. Whereas things like super mutants and big creatures will suffer things like bleeding and pain, but they're not going to have that insane headshot chance because they have a lot more armor and stuff around their skulls. Robots and synths are not affected at all by this mod as most of it is about bleeding, pain, things like that, so obviously a robot's not going to care. One thing to note is that companions and essential actors will be immune to the bleeding effect because if they get shot they will bleed and go down and it'll happen repeatedly so it's kind of annoying so the author just chose to make them immune to it. And one more thing about NPCs is that the stim packs in this mod are severely nerfed for you and you're going to require a lot of other types of aid items to be able to heal things. However, for the NPCs, stim packs kind of remain the same. The reason being that NPCs can't use a lot of the new healing items, so they are still able to use the original stim packs as they were just so that they're actually able to heal in combat. Now, with all of these new damage types, you're going to need to be able to heal yourself. So here's a list of all of the new healing items and what they do, because trust me, you're going to need them. For starters, we have the Morphine Injector. This is going to replace Medex. It's going to alleviate pain for a long duration and also give you some damage resistance and allow you to run when your legs are crippled, which is not exactly the best idea as it is going to damage them, but you can still do it. Ibuprofen and codeine are also added, which are going to alleviate pain as well, and also add some slow healing to non-crippled body parts. There is now some hemostatic gauze, which is going to be used to help with light bleed. It's going to slowly heal limbs and make them immune to light bleeds for the duration, but it's not going to do anything for heavy bleeds. For that, you're going to need a tourniquet for limbs or a chest seal for your chest. This is going to completely stop the heavy bleed. Additionally, there's a really nice item known as the Surgery Kit. This is going to stop heavy bleeding, remove the crippled status, and quickly heal crippled body parts. But it is going to cause pain and leave you vulnerable, giving you increased chance to bleed or get crippled again. So I'd recommend taking this with some painkillers and getting out of the situation. We now have Splints, which is going to instantly heal a crippled body part, removing the crippled status and allowing them to be healed further, but it's not going to actually heal them, it's just going to fix them. Then we have the TXA injector. This is going to promote blood clotting and make it so that bleeding has less of an effect. So take this if you're severely bleeding, it's going to slow it down a good bit. Stim packs now are just used for general HP healing. It's going to have a nice slow HP heal over a pretty long duration. So if you just need to get your health points back up, stim pack is the way to go, but it's not going to have a lot of the effects that it used to have in the vanilla game. Now the next one's pretty interesting. It is the field blood transfusion kit. This is going to replace the vanilla blood pack and it's going to be now probably the most powerful healing item in the game as it's going to rapidly restore hit points. It's going to restore your body condition, so undo cripples. It's going to reduce your radiation as you are getting a full blood transfusion. The only thing is, is you really need to use this outside of combat as it's going to disable running while you're using it. And you can only use it if your weapon is holstered. So if you want to try using this in combat, you're going to have a bad time. Up next, we have the CADTPA Radiation Treatment Kit. This is going to be a replacement for Radaway, something a little bit more realistic, quote unquote. It's going to take a lot longer to heal your radiation. However, it has a really long lasting effect and will end up healing more radiation overall than Radaway. It's just going to take, again, a lot longer. Up next, we have a potassium iodide tablets. This is going to replace Radex. It's more powerful, longer lasting, and now provides a little bit of rad removal. So better than Radex overall, just has a new name. Atropine injector is going to give you some powerful poison resistance, which poison was never really a huge problem in the vanilla game, so I don't see it 
posing much of a threat here, but it's there if you need it. And now food will still heal HP, just like it used to. However, it will only do so out of combat. So don't try to eat during combat. You know, throwing down a Deathclaw steak isn't going to help you out while you're fighting something. You're going to need to actually sit down in your settlement and enjoy some food if you want to heal up that way. Now, one last set of changes to the game are perks. All of the healing perks or things that have to do with your health and how you heal have had a few changes. So we'll go ahead and talk about those really quick, and that should be just about it. So for starters, the Medic perk is no longer going to increase the strength of Simpax or Radaway. Instead, taking the Medic perk will allow you to craft better aid items at the Chemistry Station. So this is how you're going to get those really cool things like Surgery Kits. Additionally, any health regeneration perks or bobbleheads that will increase your health regeneration are now instead going to give you additional max HP as opposed to regeneration. Adamantium Skeleton is no longer going to reduce your limb damage. Instead, it will reduce fall damage and makes worn armor weigh less. So that's pretty nice. The Big League's perk is now going to have melee damage bonuses increased to maintain balance with firearms. So Big League's perk is going to be better now and melee weapons overall are going to be a bit stronger so that they can try to keep up with guns while you have this mod enabled. So yeah, I think that's just about it. This mod is going to require the immersive animation framework so that it can use the nice custom animations with the new eight items. And the next mod isn't exactly a hard requirement, but it is cool to check out the Condition Boy mod, which is going to have your limb condition up on your HUD at all times. As this mod is actually going to remove the crippled status effect that pops up, you'll just use the Condition Boy instead. It's sort of like a Tarkov readout that has colors. So much like Power Armor, it'll turn orange and then red as the health gets lower and lower on that limb. But yeah. That is MAME, the Wounds, Bleeding, Pain Meds, and Headshot mod. There's a whole lot in this one, and uh, it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. If you're looking for a difficulty overhaul and you want to try something new, check this one out. There's a lot of mods out there like Agony and other ones, but each of them brings something different to the table. Personally, I like this one a lot. It's really cool, and it adds a nice difficulty to the game, but it's not overly difficult. It's not punishing. It's not hardcore. It just has to make you think about combat a little bit more, which is what I'm looking for in a difficulty mod. But yeah, that's the mod. Go ahead and consider checking out. It'll be linked down in the description below. Give the author some love and show them your support if you enjoy the mod. Real quick before we go, big shout out to all my patrons. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for supporting every single video and all of the projects I do. If you want to consider checking out my Patreon yourself, there's a handful of perks out there like exclusive Discord roles, early access to my mods, stuff like that. Completely optional though. You guys are wonderful enough as it is supporting me here on YouTube. You guys are awesome. So with that, let's go ahead and end this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating. Subscribe if you haven't already for more videos just like this. We do lots of Fallout mods here, so if you're somehow new to the channel and this is your first time watching a video by me, consider subscribing. We do more stuff like this all the time. With that, we'll go ahead and call it. See you guys. Peace.